So I want to talk about uh, uh, Euro politics, and I have I haven't been really well in the past few days, but I've been meaning to talk about things, but things have been have been sad and things here are not so good but this is an important video so due to um, recent events and there has been so much that I want to talk about um, liberal men resigned from the from the ministry and um, I think this is a reflex of what international policies and the impact they're having in Israel the thing is I think Netanyahu is kind of already in pre-electoral mode and always seeking international approval and forgetting really what's at stake. And we've seen so far that Israel keeps on giving in and giving in and giving in to international pressure and to leftist ideas and forgetting the security of their citizens. It's 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 incredible that Israel is the only country in the world that has no right to defend itself. Like, you see the United States, if a single missile was heading towards the United States, what would happen? They'd move the hell out of the country that sent a freaking uh, missile to them. Russia, likewise. And if you see how Russia acts, if something happens in Syria or any territory they have interest in, and Iran and stuff like that, every single country has a strong military reaction to any sort of provocation. Only Israel is forced to take it, take it in and not react. We've seen this time and time again. When will Israel stand up for itself? In World War II, no one wanted to protect Jews. All throughout Europe, it's uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Anti-Semitism is really strong in this house too. Um, and whenever I'm talking about Israel. Um, so, and I have no light, I have the cell phone here now, but anyway, um, so as I was saying, the world didn't care when Hitler was killing Jews. Canada rejected Israel, um, Jewish, uh, migrants. A lot of countries closed their doors to Jews. Everyone all throughout Europe kept on telling Jews to return to Israel. It's it's like for centuries and centuries, for millennia even, everyone in Europe kept on telling Jews to go back to Israel, sending Jews back to where they came from. And now that Jews are back where they are from, no one can protect themselves? They have no right to be in their homeland? Is this what you are pandering to? I'm sorry, it's like I cannot stand this anymore. It's, it's, it's painful to see millions of Jews in Israel at risk because Israel is caving in to international pressure. It's caving in to leftists. I am sorry, but do whatever it takes to keep your citizens safe. A lot of leftists would rather be killed by a terrorist than admit they're wrong. They're just nut jobs. They're crazy, and they're pandering to, pe to, to, to people that put national security at risk. When you came in to there's a good thing you don't negotiate with terrorists. You're giving them power. And there's a good example of it. Whenever Israel 
gives them and gives them territory uh, for uh, a non-accepted treaty. Like every time Israel gave up territory for peace, nothing. Why? Because they see that Israel is weak and they can get away with whatever they want. So they will keep on pressuring and pressuring and pressuring. They are seeing this as a victory, that Israel is weak and willing to negotiate. That's not how you win a war. That's not how you protect your people. You need a hiring fist if you're going to protect your citizens. You need to trust God. And I, I shouldn't talk about God because I know a lot of Israelis are secular. I know that most of the Knesset is secular. secular but... Israel is for Jews, and God protects Jews as long as Jews follow God. That's another reason not to allow Reform and conservative Jews to have a say in religious affairs of Israel like they have in the rest of the world, but that's the video. The subject of this video is how the Prime Minister should protect Israel. And it's simple. Iron fist. Retaliation. They send in rockets, you send in and bulldoze, whatever they have there to protect your citizens. Stop caring about terrorists. You're saving terrorists' lives while sacrificing families, Jewish families, innocent families. It's not normal. You're basically a walking target. You are putting a sign on the back of every single Israeli that says, kick me. But instead of kick me, it says, kill me. That's what you're putting by not retaliating and by not using a hiring fist against terrorists. You need to take a more proactive m measures and more deterrence measures against terrorists. Like, you see how for years and years, Korea was big-mouthing and saying they have nukes and then they'd start a war and whatever. Oh, let's negotiate, let's negotiate, let's negotiate. Everyone wanted to negotiate, and Korea kept on the threats, and the threats kept on growing and growing and growing, and the, the fat mad man kept on escalating. And what does Trump do? Let's bomb the whole thing down. Let's bomb everything. Everyone said Trump, what, Trump was mad. Everyone said that he was trying to create World War III. And lo and behold, what happens? Korea wants to negotiate. And that's how you show power. You need to show power. You need to show that you have all the cards in your hand. You cannot just give up and want negotiations to spare your citizens. Israel has one of the best armies in the world. And... If Israel wanted to destroy Gaza, Israel would destroy Gaza. You only negotiate when you don't have enough power to protect your country. An Israeli, Israel has probably the best army in the world. There are other great armies, but Israel is one of the best in the world. Why do you need to negotiate with terrorists when you have an army that is more than capable to destroy them and what happens if you show them your power is they are going to want to negotiate themselves and when you offer to negotiate you're giving them the bread and the knife and they can make the terms of the negotiations and what is going to happen because Israel, the, Israel doesn't have a death penalty there are hundreds and hundreds of terrorists crawling in Israeli prison, prisons. What happens They demand the release of hundreds of terrorists that later come back to stab 
and kill more Israelis. It's time to stop with the madness. It's time that the president, the prime minister, and everyone start thinking about Israelis. It's more, it's important that they start thinking about Jewish lives. You define Israel as a Jewish state. The Jewish state should stand to protect Jews. The entire world is against Jews. You saw what happened at the UN. The UN repeatedly votes against Israel in every single decision. They condemn Israeli action against terrorists, but fail to condemn terrorist attacks against Israelis. Look at the world. See who are your allies, your friends. Protect your family. Protect Israel. Because if you don't protect Israel, no one will. In World War II, you know what happened. And why? Because good people let bad things happen. And when good people let bad things happen, that's the most cruel thing in the world. So, stop caring about the opinion of the entire world. Care for Israel. Protect Jews. Protect Israelis from those that are trying to kill them. Whatever you do, the international media already has a bad opinion of Israel. Israel doesn't defend itself, and yet you see thousands and thousands of video defaming IDF. If, no matter what Israel does, Israel is going to have a bad rap with the international community, at least Israel can and should protect its citizens from terrorists. It's high time that Israel shows the world that it may be tiny, but it is a giant, and God is on Israel's side. Israel should show that they trust God and that they are there to protect God's people and protect Israel and stand for good. Because no other country in this world now stands for good. They're protecting evil. And evil can't win. So, Netanyahu, stop trying to be friends with those who would stab your country, your people, your very family in the back. They're not your friends. Anyway, that's it for this video. And uh, please comment, say what you think, what you believe in. And I'm sorry for interruptions. Anyway, bye until next video.